proxy model, sketch, speed model, what have you. For me, it's all the same thing. Essentially, it's just, it's a quick, you know, only a few days maximum uh, representation of what you want as far as the character is concerned. Uh, and that, for me, applies whatever it is that you're doing, not just when you're creating cloth, you know, if you're making hard surface, if you're making organic models, if you're making creatures, you always, always, always want to be making a sketch in ZBrush before you spend, you know, like the two months it's going to take you or however long it's going to take you to do the high poly itself. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, like for some people that's going to, like, that's that's just obvious that you're supposed to do that, but you would be surprised how many people even still working in the video game industry don't even do sketches before they produce a 3D model. They just go straight to high res. And by doing that, you know, like they will spend months and months and months just working out little details left and right, uh, but never really kind of taking that kind of big picture view of the character first. Uh, and that leads to all sorts of problems of uh, construction, design, proportions down the line. So you always want to start with a sketch. You, know? you guys can see here, if I just show you, let's say where I am here with, with this uh, jacket right here. So this is my high res. And this is what the sketch looked like. This is a sketch that isn't necessarily very sketchy in terms of uh, surface, because uh, it's been sliced and polygrouped and uh, zero meshed. But the idea is, is that if you guys look at the high res, they both actually closely match. Um, there are certainly details that are different. So on the sketch here, you guys can see that if we just look at the back here, you guys can see that the back is actually quite quite plain. There's not all that much that's happening here in terms of design. Uh, and that I have certainly spiced it up a little bit when I uh, made the high res. So uh, a sketch really is a starting point for a garment. It doesn't mean that it needs to be that, that, that we are completely married to the design after we are done with a sketch. Uh, we can certainly change the design as we go along, especially if we're doing a, a personal project, if we're not... You know, if, if we're working from a very, very clearly established concept, obviously we have a lot, lot less leeway. But in general, essentially a sketch is really just a starting point. So this is what the sketch looks like. Um, never mind the feet right here. And as you guys can see, I tried to really, really, really uh, spend enough time in here so that I could really answer what I consider to be the three important things that we want, the three important things that we want to resolve, the three problems, if you will, that is important for us to resolve when we make a sketch for a character. The three things that we want to resolve. One is we want to answer any sort of questions as far as uh, volumes and proportions are concerned, you know? So make sure that essentially our volumes, our proportions, like, like that everything is well proportioned in relation to everything else. Um, and uh, even if you're making just one shirt, if you're making just one garment, you know, if I'm, if the only thing I'm literally doing is only this coat here, I still want to make sure that I am sketching it out first of all, because again, I want to make sure that I have a nice, that, that the volumes are representative of what I want them to be. Now, what I mean by silhouette then is, uh, we want to make sure that the silhouette of our character is strong, right? If we put, let's say a, uh, if we put everything here as grayscale, uh, or as, as as completely black, right? If we use completely black materials, we want to make sure that the silhouette is interesting for like the character itself, uh, that we are happy with the shape, that we find that by looking at the silhouette itself, we can actually read the character properly. Uh, 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 and that, uh, but like also the things that we kind of want to pay attention to when we're working on silhouette is things like allowing to have these ever so slight, let's say silhouette breaks just like that, uh, between the different, let's say, garment pieces that we have, you know? Like, for me, just just flaring out here, um, if you will, uh, where the coat ends and where the, the shirt that is under that uh, begins, if you will, as far as the character is concerned for me, that's like super important because from far, it'll, it'll mean that we'll be just better able to read the shapes more instantaneously. Our brain will be able to more instantaneously understand what it is that we're looking about. And we want to pay attention. We want to give some time. We want to give some attention to that while we're working on a sketch. Uh, it's something that I think a lot of people have a tendency to uh, uh, sort of not really think about when they're uh, people who do character art but don't have necessarily a background, let's say, in drawing, uh, won't have a tendency to think about these kind of things. But uh, certainly we want to make sure that uh, the border even between all the different garment pieces are easily readable. 
when we're looking at the silhouette itself. Uh, and you want to make sure that, you know, the silhouette also convenes the feeling of a garment that fits well on the character. You know, if we want closely fitting clothes, we want to make sure that the silhouette communicates that. And the volumes, of course, it's kind of, it's kind of more or less the same thing uh, at that point. But yeah, so silhouette, uh, so silhouette is number two. And then number three, what we want to really pay attention to in a sketch itself is construction. We want to make sure that the construction of the garment has been fully resolved. The last thing that you guys can do, it's terrible for you if you do that, go too quickly to Marvelous Designer without first having made sure that you have resolved in your mind and certainly in 3D too, uh, ideally in 3D, not just in your mind, but that you have actually successfully resolved for yourself um, all of the potential construction problems with the garment itself, you know, that you know how the different cloth panels are supposed to be laid out, uh, where the different cloth panels are supposed to be, where they're supposed to start, where they're supposed to end. You want to make sure that you have essentially solved all of these problems ahead of time uh, before you jump into Marvelous, because it's very, very easy inside of ZBrush to add a seam somewhere, to suggest a seam somewhere. Uh, if the construction of something is not clear already to you ahead of time, it's a lot more complicated to do that inside of uh, Marvelous Designer. So make your life easy. Uh, make sure that you solve everything that has to do with how you will construct a garment in terms of design. To me, there's really two ways you can do that, that you can successfully achieve that when you're make, making a sketch. The first one is to break it down quite literally into different panels, different polygroups, uh, where you can clearly see essentially where each cloth panel will start and end. You know, that for me really is number one. You know, uh, uh, you can just slice and dice your mesh as much as you want, which is what I've done here. Um, that's one way of uh, solving the construction. The, the second way that you can kind of solve the construction for yourself, you can communicate that through your 3D model, is to just go in there and just uh, take a seam brush and just create seams. Um, uh, so I've created a brush for myself, so a seam brush, uh, and sooner or later I will certainly show you guys how to make some of these basic brushes. Uh, using a 3D alpha, which I consider to be important too in this particular case, uh, and, you know, for me it's quite literally, like, if I'm looking at this and I'm kind of imagining where the seams should be placed, I'm kind of trying to solve that in my mind, I'll just be using this brush and I'll just be like, yeah, I think I would like to have a seam here and, I don't know, maybe I'd like to have a different seam there and what have you. It's like super easy to just, in one stroke, essentially to create a seam somewhere. Um, and while we're working on a sketch, uh, you know, I consider that we address that, that, that we fulfill the third objective uh, by simply sketching out, if you will, very easily where we want the different seams to happen on our garment. Uh, something that can also do the job really, really well. Uh, if you guys look, unfortunately it's out of the default brushes inside of ZBrush, but if I open the light box here inside of ZBrush, what, what we can do is use uh, something that's called a slash to brush. So if I just go here to brush and afterward I go to slash here, I'll just find the folder that is called slash right here, slash, and just use the slash number two brush. Uh, it's going to give you something that's very, 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 very similar. It's not as clean as you can see. It's not quite as clean, but it does the job essentially. If you guys want to be like, all right, I think there should be a seam here and a seam there, what have you, whatever. Uh, you can turn on uh, lazy mouse on that too. I think you'll, you'll get a better result, you know? So it's pretty close, you know, even for through the stream, there may not even uh, be a difference right now between the, this slash two brush and the seam brush I've used previously. So essentially, you know, it does, it does the job. Okay, I really want to give you guys all the information, all the tools that you need to be able to, uh, accurately sketch out your garment. And next week's course will be to, uh, once we've reached this stage here, now how do we go through the different, uh, through the different process stages to take this and break it down like this here, and then to break it down like that and to essentially convert to something that first is a bit cleaner inside of ZBrush and then we will bring that inside of Marvelous Designer. We will cover essentially that whole pipeline from A to Z uh, in great detail next week. So this week's really uh, objective is to get to this stage here and to do all these, uh, 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 to simply solve for ourself, ourselves the construction. And I can show you the high res for this so that you guys can do that comparison there again. So. You guys can see that, you know, this is the high res. You guys can see 
where all the different elements are placed. You guys can see where all the seams are placed. And let's look at the sketch again so you guys can, can do the comparison there. Oh, right, it's this one right here. So this was the sketch. Uh, and again, you guys can see where all the seams are. You can see that the, there's really nothing in the way of, of nice topology in this case, but this is the high res. And some seams have shifted around a little bit. That's obviously normal. We will obviously uh, uh, move seams around a little bit as they need to be moved around to get a better fit for our garment. Uh, but for the most part, you guys can see that, that uh, this is very true to the sketch uh, in terms of volumes, proportions, construction, and what have you.